Yo, what's up, people? It's the Solar Kid, and this is the Other Side of the Sun podcast, and we have the lovely Eliane Correa with us today. Hi, guys. Hello. Up, 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 up. <laughs> How are you doing, Eli? Yeah, I'm good, man. Enjoying the sunshine today, you know? Yeah. Good. It's the least we can get in this crazy time. You know? in, this, uh, <laughs> in this weird country where the sun hardly yeah. shines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, How are you, man? I'm good. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just busy, as always. You know me. Always busy with something. Same here. Um, yeah, for those who don't know, Ellie is a composer, pianist, producer, MD, arranger, songwriter. I oh, mean, your titles just go on and on and on. <laughs> Curator yeah. of the London Latin Festival, Jazz Festival, music supervisor of Djembe, uh, pianist of the Han- world of Hans Zimmer. Yeah. Yeah, Levi, I know you got so many titles. You're just all around yeah, I amazing. Mean- I've just kind of stopped saying, I'm just like, what do you do? I'm a musician. What kind of music do you do? Everything. Everything. <laughs> you know? Like, do you sing as well? I'm like, no, that I don't do. <laughs> you should though. You got the husky voice, you know. Nah, nah, nah. I tell people, oh, like, oh, so what kind of music do you sing? I'm like, darling, I only sing when I'm drunk. The rest of the time, you don't want to hear me. <laughs> Uh, I love yeah. your voice though, man. Especially on the back. Right. Yeah, I think your vocals are sick. We should do. We should do an a uh, 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 Ellie vocal album. Just strictly. Oh hell no. <laughs> no! No, I mean, I I don't think we should charge for it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it should be free. Yeah, everything else, yeah, but my vocals, mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Early man, um, tell me a bit about your background. Like I, I mean, we spend time together, but I didn't actually. We don't get to spend proper time to get to know each other because we always work in or it's music related or whatever. So tell me about your background. Like, where did you grow up? What was it like? Stuff like that. Um. So I grew up in Luxembourg. Uh-huh. My my parents are Cuban, Argentinian, Spanish. It's a complicated history. So that's why when people ask, I'm like, I'm from Latin America because I just kind of Embodied. not necessarily want to be explaining my entire family tree to everyone I meet. But yeah, like basically the story is I grew up in Luxembourg, um, surrounded by people who were not from there. So it was a kind of all immigrant community. So I grew up speaking French and Portuguese and Spanish and hanging you know, out with people from all over Latin America, all over Southern Europe, all over Africa. It was just like this really great mix of people. Mm. and. The thing is, I really didn't like it in Luxembourg at all. So I finished school early so that I could leave. And I moved to Cuba. Um, My mom as well. Uh, She moved there to work um, in translation and I moved there to study music. So I went to uni there. Um, Did a bit of a kind of took a scenic route through Argentina where I was um, helping my dad, who was a photographer, doing this, um, you know, helping him out with a series of photography that he was doing about the crisis and other people that became impoverished because of the various economic crises of Argentina over the last you know, 20, 30 years. So I kind of spent a few months with him there. Um, and then I went to Cuba and I was meant to be there for a few months and I basically stayed. <laughs> and ended up sticking around. Um, and from there I ended up moving to London. Um, yeah, why, why London? Like what made you come to London? <laughs> I didn't come to London for London. I came to London because I was accepted at SOAS to study ethnomusicology, which in retrospect, I had no idea what that was about, what SOAS meant, or what, how that was going to change my life and my vision of things. Um, but I also had no idea that coming to London itself, that London, the city, would become such an integral part of my life. I mean, I, was, I came to London, I was like, I'm going to do my, my uh, music bachelor's and then I'm moving back to Cuba, you know? Mm. And that's exactly what I did. But eventually I realized I was missing London. And by then I had already started the first of all the projects that I have, which was my Banguara, which is the, mm-hmm. yes. the band that I work with you on the yes. most. Yes. Um, and by then, what I was already happening, there was dates coming in, there was tours coming in, there was awards coming in. And I'm there in Cuba and I'm like, man, this is great, but... It's not London. 
think of London a second a second ago. So I, I came back to London. Um, and since then, it's been this thing where every maybe two years, I get fed up with it. And I'm like, this time, this is it. I'm leaving. I'm moving back to Cuba. Or like, you know, more recently, it's been, I'm moving to Barcelona. Anywhere else that's basically warmer and where people speak Spanish, you know? Yeah. Um, and so yeah, I packed all my stuff, sold my furniture, given away my plants, like three times, four times already. And then I always go away. And eventually, you know, I always say London is a bad boyfriend. Um, it's like a boyfriend that talks to you badly and then you go away and it sweet talks you into coming back. So <laughs> here I am, you know, I'm still here. <laughs> well, that, I mean, that is literally how London is to so many people. It's because like yeah. when you're here, you love the fact that, I mean, things can just happen quick. You can make things happen really quickly, especially like in music and stuff. You can get a player, a bass player, this, that, put things together, do a gig, put the tour together. But then it gets to a point where it becomes so overwhelming and you don't have any time for yourself. And then that's why you want to go to a place like Barcelona or you want to go back to Cuba and stuff and then chill. And then like you say, you go there, you chill in the sun and then after a while you think, ah, oh, but London. Yeah, I mean, London. there is a there is a strong cultural element as well. I mean, I love it here and I love the fact that it's like a little world in a city. So whatever music you want to listen to it's here you know you want to listen to afrobeat you have Dele Sosimi he used to direct Fela Kuti's band mm. you want to listen to Congolese music there are nights that put it on you want to go listen to music like you know Indian classical music they have it you want to, listen to, you want to go to a Bollywood thing you got it you know you want to go to a Cuban thing we have some you know wherever you like it's tiny little bites of the world but on the other hand Culturally, I feel like the central, the central culture of the way we, we live here in the UK. So, you know, the, this British politeness and this whole kind of the way we are, we are asked to integrate as immigrants. Mm. I don't always agree with that. Mm. And I think that's probably why we all, as people that come from cultures that are different, that are warmer, that are, um, you know. When people greet each other and whatever and stuff like Yeah, they're like closer. I feel like they're closer cultures. Where people have like more closeness, mm -hmm. um, both like, you know, psychosocially and emotionally. I feel like, you know, people live more on top of each other. And at least in the Latin cultures that I come from, I don't know if for you as well. Yeah, in South Africa uh, as well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I feel like the fact that, you know, we move here and part of our integration is about learning to behave a certain way and becoming colder. And so whenever I go to Spain, even in Spain, which is not that remote a culture, it's a European culture as well. Even there, people kind of tell me, hey, you know, you're, I can see the British in you because you're very <laughs> cold. And I'm like, whoa, you know? Um, actually, I've been in London too long. <laughs> trying to come to terms with the fact that this might actually also perspire in, in my music, you know? And so this is something that I think about a lot. Um, cultural integration. What parts of your, your original self are you willing to, to make malleable for the culture that you live in? Mm. So, um, yeah, I don't know. This well, is I think, that I mean, that's the, the same thing that you're saying. Am, you know? No, but I think, I think that the, the, the exact same thing that you're saying is what all the expats and the immigrants that are here bring to this country. You know, that's why London is so amazing is because if there weren't Indian people, curry wouldn't be the national dish. I mean, Latin music is all over the place. You know what I'm saying? It makes people warmer. The, the festivals are amazing. I mean, summer year is, is, is amazing. I mean, you can't deny yeah. that. Like, you know, and like, yeah. that was one of the biggest things for me when I came here because it was like, I was into rock music. I was into hip hop. I was into soul. I was into jazz. I became, I became acquainted. I remember I used to go to Bar Salsa when I first came here. I was like, yo, this is dope. You know? Oh, like, man, Bar Salsa is a crazy place. Crazy. Yeah, I remember, because obviously I was, I was still new. We used to just find everything. Yeah. I used to pretend I was Latin. I used to just pretend I could uh, salsa. Yeah, you, yeah. You know, I used to just do it. <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's what we love about London, and that's what we hate about London as well, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So you move, you move between Cuba, Barcelona, and, and London. Yeah, that's what I do. So you know, I feel like I have a bit of a base in all three places. Um, so you know, I work with people in in Havana. I make music with people in Havana. I shoot videos in Havana. I have a network there. 
we were due to play in Havana just before the crazy COVID apocalypse um, struck us. Um, yeah, I remember. Then, I remember you were like, I actually remember oh, that day oh, because I was speaking to you. We were so hyped. And they were like, um, we might lock down. And you guys all had tickets booked to, to go to Cuba. And you were trying to find a flight or something. And then I was like, oh, shit, we're getting locked down. And then all your band members couldn't go. And you were like, no, I'm going to Cuba. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going anyway. I was like, if the apocalypse <laughs> comes, I would much rather be at home in Havana with my mom. Like, nah, <laughs> bye-bye. <laughs> I ended up getting stuck there for over four months, you know. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I was going there for like two weeks. I was like, well, surely, you know, okay, the festival's cancelled. Everything's cancelled. I've got nothing to do in the UK. My flat in Cuba is nice. I live next door to my mom, like in a nice neighborhood. I have like friends there. It's warm. It's, the food is nice. It's, I was like, well, if there is an apocalypse, I wouldn't much rather be there. So, you know, shit, I'll go anyway, you know? And I thought it would be like mostly, you know, two, three weeks maybe, one month or something. Ha! <laughs> Look, we're in November, still not finished. <laughs> it's crazy, like right? it. So, I mean, how has, has this, uh, how has this lockdown been for you? And how has it, like, affected your, your music? And, I mean, you, I know you, you're always traveling, you're busy, so. Yeah, I don't know how to not be busy. It's, it's a skill I'm learning very slowly. Um, being unproductive sometimes and just kind of sitting with myself, observing my surroundings is something that I'm slowly learning how to do. Um, and part of it, you know, the lockdown, I kind of had to because in, in Cuba, the internet situation is not great. It's not like you can just go on Netflix or go on Facebook. <laughs> Data is crazy expensive. There is no Wi-Fi. That's like South Africa, yeah? Okay, but there is Wi-Fi at least, but still, yeah. Yeah, no, like we, no, we, did, we didn't just have the internet. It wasn't a thing that you just have. You go to the internet to pick up the thing you need and then you disconnect from the internet. It's not a thing that lives among us. And so it was really interesting to, um, to just live life not necessarily connected and staring at a screen all day. So when you sit down at the computer, you do it with a purpose. Um, so I did, you know, loads of Tai Chi and yoga and, you know, I became really physically active while I was there, which really helped me. Um, and I kind of sat down and wrote an album. <laughs> um, I wouldn't so put it I past you. I know you. You don't ever stop, man. I don't know if you sleep sometimes. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry for that noise. It's someone's building stuff upstairs. If you oh, hear some noise, just the guy upstairs. Um, so, yeah, so I wrote an album for my salsa band. So I have, okay, I have three bands. Wara is one of them. So we've worked on that quite a bit. It's quite a yeah. poppy kind of. I don't want to call it urban. Fusion. It's a terrible term. Yeah, um, fusion. Out here, like how 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 do we define water? Like it's a Latin mostly fusion. Latin, Latin fusion. It's a bit poppy, but it's very political. It's feminist. It's anti-racist. It's pro-immigrant. We've worked on this a lot. Um, we're actually dropping a music video. I think like in January. So oh, yeah? that's gonna. Be yeah, we've been working on this music video for three years now, and we're finally finishing it. Um, so who's, who's the yeah. main members? Is it, it's you, Feds, and uh, Juanita, and who else? Me, Fed, and Juanita, and Ali on bass, and Alexis on guitar, and Ernesto on drum Ernesto, kit. Yeah. Um, we kind of work as a unit. Ali wasn't always on bass, though. She's she's recent. No, <laughs> it's been a it's been a long thing. So let me let me walk you through a bit like a trajectory of how things have developed for me. Um, I started what I think like 10, 11 years ago, 10 years ago. And I started it out as this kind of Cuban salsa based uh, project with a bit of a rocky reggae, kind of multi London kind of edge. Reggae you know? No, no, not even. It was more like a more organic sounding. It was, there was like nine of us. Uh, so we had horns, we had like, you know, funk guitars. It was quite funky. It was like, you know, a mix of Cuban salsa. When was like that? Music. How long ago was that? This is 10 years ago. Um, Did you play Parsi we... Clouds? Yes. I must Loads. have seen you then, man. I must have seen you back then that time. We sounded very different now. We sounded when mm. we brought yeah. you the tracks. Um, so that was the first phase we, we, you know, it went quite well. We did a, a, a few UK tours. We toured internationally a bit as well. Once some awards sold out the jazz cafe and various other places and it was going well and um but then it, after we released the first album live to remain in 2013 i kind of 
did like a deep dive into Afro-Cuban jazz and discovered spiritual, or discovered, discovered spiritual jazz and kind of just disconnected from that. And at the same time, many other people in the band were also kind of discovering their own personal voices as musicians. So we kind of stopped for a bit, took it easy. I went and released an album with a different project called En El Aire, yeah, which was a really Latin jazzy, Afro-Cuban, you know, very carefully arranged thing, which to this day I listen back to it and I'm like, yeah, I, I still like this. I'm so I happy. loved I loved that project. I thought that was beautiful. That Thanks, project. man. Yeah, that like was... one thing is about me is you know, if I release something and I still like it six months later, I start worrying about myself. I think that um, one was really personal to you as it seemed really personal yeah. as well. It seemed like something very yeah. spiritual and, and personal to yeah. you. Yeah. So. And I still like it. That's the only one where I'm like, I'm still like, oh, this music is is me because it came from like a very deep place in me. And this was unrelated to what I was a different group of musicians, a completely different sound. Um, then what I kind of, we decided that this salsa sounding thing, it was, we loved it, but we felt like a lot of people couldn't connect with it because it fell in, in between the gaps between the salsa thing, the world music thing, you couldn't yeah. place it basically that's that's the problem with a lot well not a problem but like when you want to get publishing or signed or like to the, they, they always want to yeah. box you unless you do it yourself you know like oh yeah i mean it wasn't even about getting signed and like, getting famous and whatever but like we felt like the audience for a, for uh, a place like, like like if we had been in a spanish-speaking country if we had been in latin america the water sound that we had initially would have really worked because people would have been able to connect with it but we were writing from a point of view that was very Latino centric and we are in London. And that's kind of where we were like, well, we need to make something that is more accessible to a, a really international audience. Yeah. People that don't necessarily speak Spanish, people that don't necessarily understand where to find the one in a, in a salsa pattern, you know, <laughs> which is fine. And which is the case with a vast majority of people here. And that doesn't make them, worse listeners it's just a, a cultural difference and that's okay you know um well most london uh, well not most londoners most english people don't know how to find the one on any normal music anyway i'm just joking <laughs> but when it comes to for example production yeah true oh well, they have they have other strengths here mm -hmm. this is the pioneers of 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 electronic music production for example they're here yeah. They're not in, you know, and I'm glad Latin America is picking up and they're starting to produce their own heavyweights. But traditionally, historically, like in terms of electronic music and, and rock music and all of this, you know, this, so, yeah. uh, there is more, more listening culture for that here. And that's, you know, that's what makes the world nice. That different ears are used to different types of music, I think, you know. Um, but anyway, so Wara became this much more like bass heavy, like, Poppy sound with loads of electronics and I got a guitar, started going crazy with my guitar. <laughs> so much fun. Oh man, I love it so much. Another six of us and the sound has changed. Um, and yeah, we've just been doing that now. It's it's this other well, like so how is how is this lockdown? Obviously, as it um I mean like I've always known you've always got a gig somewhere, like so obviously now you've been dead the last what year like how's it affected like um... uh, you know um well uh -huh. actually well, i have to, <laughs> i wanted to tell you about one more project i after wara became this very like basic thing like sort of more uh, ma more mainstream to be honest we i started a salsa band because i was like i need to write some latin music that's got tumbao mm. in it you know <laughs> otherwise i don't feel like i exist in the world um and actually the last gig i did um I, the last thing we did was what up, but just before that, we actually sold out Ronnie Scott's jazz club yes. with the Sasa band. Yeah, because I played upstairs and, in December. Yeah. And I saw, yeah. I was like, we were playing upstairs um, with the band I was playing with, and then I said, oh, Ellie's here. She's come fucking sold out Ronnie Scott's, man. That's, that's dope. <laughs> yes. I was like, yeah. yo, that's dope. Where's my ticket? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. We actually, you know, we were meant to play again uh, this month, and... That got postponed until spring, obviously. So now we're doing an online concert with that salsa band. And I've, li I've, li I've just literally an hour ago launched the crowdfunding for... Um, the La, La Evolution. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the salsa thing. And we're doing an online concert as a nine piece with special guests and all of this. 
but we need, need to cover the expenses because this stuff costs money, you know? So um, yeah, I've just launched the crowdfunding. So there's going to be an online concert at the beginning of December. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're finally doing stuff, but I've kept myself busy in lockdown, you know? Um, I'm guessing you have as well. You, this never stops. I don't care. Like, you know, people are furloughed and sitting at home like, oh, I'm so bored. I got nothing to do. Do stuff, man. There's board always is, something is, to uh, do. Board has never and been... if you find other things to do, go learn yeah. something new, you know? Like, I've learned how to play chess. I'm still really bad at it. Um, I've learned some Tai Chi, which is actually keeping me sane. Started exercising. I learned how to cook a bunch of things. I'm teaching myself a bunch of languages on Duolingo. And apart from all of that stuff, like, I'm super busy with music you know like i've written an album we're currently sorting out the pre-production for the recording we're doing this online concert thing which requires quite a bit of preparation what else like um i'm finishing editing two music videos with two singles no sorry three music videos for three singles one of which came back this morning with the mix and it's mwah, beautiful uh all of this stuff is going to be dropping between january and march um what else? I've been working with a museum. I've been working on. God, no, I'm just I'm just doing a bunch of I stuff. I wouldn't I wouldn't expect dance. anything else, anything less from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, I don't. I, I take days off sometimes, but I feel sometimes. like it's like, not that I do so much. Like. I take a day off, and then I'm like, no, I genuinely feel like sitting down and writing no, I'm the some same. music. I'm the same. Like I, I, yeah. I well, don't know how to. Fun, you never stop either. You're you're busier than I am. You know. No, I I don't know how to relax either. It's like when you when you take a day off, you relax, and then you're like, I need to be practicing, or I need to be doing this, or I need to be working on this song, I need to work on these yeah. mixes, or so, you know, it's yeah. just. It's, yeah, there's My no such thing as bored, man. <laughs> yeah. There's no such fucking thing as bored. Stop being bored, people. Like fucking yeah. do something, man. Yeah. Tell us about yeah, your... Do nothing. Do it with purpose. Yeah. Be like, so this morning, I'm just going to sit here and look at the trees outside. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay here with my coffee and I'm going to think of nothing. That's called meditation. And it's also a thing that you're doing. It's awareness, it just, isn't it? Oh, I'm so bored. Like, I'm so... No, like... That's be it. purposefully, you know, the dolce far niente, like the Italians call it, you know? Yeah, it's a speech, thing. <laughs> But no, I mean, I was going to ask you, since you're mentioning uh, meditation and uh, I mean, that's, that's consciousness and awareness, just being aware of every moment that you're in. Yeah. Are you religious or spiritual or you? I am. I am. Um, I tend to keep those to myself a lot. Um, so in, in Cuba and in many countries where, you know, there was an, an influx of slaves being, being forced to go there, these their traditional spiritual beliefs moved on and became a part of the cultures that they ended up being a part of over time um and it's curious that something so bloody and so horrendous brought up cultures that became so beautiful like religious cultures that became such complex intricate beautiful things um in cuba we have what we call lukumi and um Orishas. That's, that's my, yeah that's my I wouldn't say, I don't call it a religion. I call it, you know, my, my spiritual path, so to speak, because I don't think we have the only truth. I think there are energies out there and I think everyone in the world has different ways of channeling and communicating with these energies to be able to tune into them so that they work in our favor and we work in their favor. So like a two way kind of mutual connection and understanding of how the energies that we cannot rationalize function. Mm. And to me, this is the system that works. This is how I channel it. But if you're Muslim or you're Christian or you're, you know, pagan or you're whatever your religion is, at the end of the day, we're all doing the same thing. Learning to channel different energies that we don't fully have a grasp of cerebrally mm. and also becoming better human and learning to put out good in the world. So for me, it's a two-sided tool. It's got the magical side to it on one side, which is learning to work with the energies of the of the of the world, of the dimensions that we don't really that don't that don't belong to us, you know. Um, and also just becoming better humans. And just the act of anyone who is spiritual has to go through the process of 
knowing what they are grateful for and knowing what they want mm. so that they can pray or channel or you know externalize this in a certain way as part of their religious practice and i think ultimately that's beautiful because not only you're putting out these positive messages into the world but you're also helping yourself this is the same thing you do in therapy at the end of the day mm. so that's how i see it i have my own way of of going about my spiritual practices i i have my altars i love them yeah, i was gonna ask you have rituals and stuff yeah yeah i mean this for me is quite a personal practice i think it's it's something that you know most of us keep with within and to ourselves i'm very open about my prayers and what i want and what i need and my praise and my love for the orishas in my music mm. so i write a lot of music about uh, you know the powers of chango about the cool. wisdom of about, uh, about all of this but then when it comes to the way i personally have this relationship with my altars and with these energies this is something that i tend to keep behind closed doors because it's the same as you know if you go to a psychologist you talk to them about your innermost your most profound self you open up and for me this that's my my opening up it's a personal, well. a personal I relationship sometimes as well when i can i i don't i'm not saying therapy isn't the answer like i i have both you know um and i think everyone should be open to different combinations of ways to just be better in the universe and find better energies in it mm. I mean, yeah, like you said, it's 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 therapy. I mean, you you're working on. I mean, it, it, you're just constantly working on yourself as as a human being, striving to be a better person. You know, like and yeah. it doesn't really matter, as you say, what well, what form you choose to 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 communicate with these universal energies. But it's about finding a peace. And I like the fact that you, it's a personal thing because it's a personal relationship. You know what I mean? It's a personal relationship with what you believe to be creation or your creator or you know what I mean anything in that yeah. sense. And and ultimately I think we all need to be not just tolerant but respectful of other people's ways of of understanding something that we will never have you to the proof of. Yeah. yeah. That's true. And that, that's that's a that's a key point. That is very key. Yeah. Point. Nobody yeah. knows but like I what believe you. this, you believe that let's learn from each other as opposed to trying to convince each other because that's not fruitful. You know? Yeah. I think that's, that's the biggest turn off for me about any uh, religious practice or spiritual practice is when people, I honestly, I have no, nothing against any religious practice and I'm open to everything. I can go to a temple, a church, a mosque or whatever, but it's when people try to make you like, yo, this is the way. If you don't do this, this way, then you are like you know what i mean or like they're like why don't you do this because if you do this blah, blah, blah. i'm like yo just chill you know what i'm saying like share your belief share your understanding with me and show me like i think the best way to 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 inspire people is is through your action you know by just being that by being a light being a a, a lovable not lovable but just being a good person you know just being nice to people like you know what i mean <laughs> i suppose you know in music with us it's very important because you never know who you're going to work with, like production sessions or even just managing a band. There are so many energies and, and characters that mm -hmm. you have to balance. So if you want to be a shitty person and think you're a superstar or whatever, you're going to end up being in a place where you're working on your own because nobody wants to play with you or nobody wants to be in a band with you or, or work. You know what I'm saying? So it, yeah. it, works, it works in life as well. Yeah. No, it does. It does. I think there's a lot to learn from our own religious practices and, and beliefs and from other people's. What mm -hmm. about you? What are your spiritual beliefs? I've never asked you this before. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about plugins and distortions and you know, <laughs> space and EQs and stuff, but we never talk about God. Like, so what's up with you, man? Yeah, so I'm, I've always been a spiritual being. I grew up um, uh, in kind of like you know, in the the Protestant Christian faith, you know what I mean? Like obviously black, singing churchy kind of vibes in South Africa. I was very involved as, as a younger kid, like say through my teens and early 20s and stuff. I was quite active in the church. I used to read the Bible. I used to speak in church yeah. and all that stuff. And then I went through like a phase in my teens where I was heavy into drugs and like I got into acid and whatever and that kind of stuff. And <laughs> <laughs> that kind of opened my mind. <laughs> Say again. 
Are your parents and your family watching? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. This oh, this yeah. podcast, this yeah. podcast is basically so many people are gonna finally get to know the real me. You know what I mean? Wow, I'm not, cool. Wow. I have not, I have nothing to, I have nothing to hide. You know. Wicked. I'm gonna be 40 next year. What the fuck do I have to hide? I'm a grown man. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, and then I kind of just started, um, like, in my early 20s, like, in, like, say, 21, 22, I started researching loads of different faiths, Rastafarianism, Taoism, Islam, Judaism, and I've been on that search and journey, like, throughout my, my adult life, and then I found yoga about 10, 12 years ago, and then became really involved in the practice of it, and then I wanted to be a teacher, and then I became involved in the philosophy of it. And I've been very, like, um, intrigued by Eastern philosophy. And, like, I've been studying and reading lots of books from ancient, you know. And then also just studying. I Like, I love, I love anthropology. I love um, world history. So I mm-hmm. delve into many ancient stuff, like, in terms of, like, South America and the, the history of South America, you know, before the Europeans came. And Africa, <laughs> ancient Africa. My ancestry is intertwined. My African ancestry is intertwined with some of the first peoples of Southern Africa, the Bushmen or the wow. Aboriginal people. So yeah, the like, hunter um, right? That's right yes, now. Yes, so the Khoi right. people and the San people. So my DNA is very linked and my heritage and background uh-huh. is very linked with that. So I'm very intrigued by like them and also just ancient African history, ancient, just world history. I love history. I love learning about people and culture because when you, when you dig into the past, like you can dig, thousands of years into the past and then realized but shit like things haven't really people still think on the same lines like we still kind of the same you know what i mean like we haven't learned lessons from people before us even though they've tried to tell us it's like people think oh this idea that i'm coming up with now is the latest greatest fucking it's like no man someone thought about that shit (laughs) (laughs) and not to mention like all the history that's been erased because of the you know the the conquerors who obviously came and wiped out histories and shit so i'm 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 fascinated by people this is what this podcast is is like i want to find out more about people and their stories and like you like i mean it's fascinating to find out where you come from what you do and like this is this is a a journey of self-discovery through other people and their stories yeah well, I hope that gives you a bit of an idea. I do. I meditate. I have my daily routines. I, I pray. I like candles. I mean, I'm I'm not averse to going to temples. I go. My my family's all like I've had to become Catholic when I got married over here and stuff. And uh, so I have to like be involved in that. But I mean, my my family back home is mixed. There's Muslims. There's like you know other people. So I'm not. I'm I'm spiritually aware and I'm open and I love learning from like all different types of texts. You know, I've read the Bible, I've read books of the Quran, I've read the Bhagavad Gita, you know, Taoist nice. philosophies and shit like that. So Yeah, I've read I've read some of the Quran. I haven't managed to I haven't I haven't yet managed to make my way through an entire book. So I've read most of the Bible, some of the Quran. And that's as far as I go. And I really, this is one of the things I want to do. Like if this lockdown continues, I've got them both like on my bookshelf over there. Mm. And that's one of the things I want to, I want to think about because I was, I was raised in, you know, my parents made a point of raising me as much of a blank slate as possible. So I grew up in Luxembourg and they said, well, you're not Luxembourgish. You're not from here. You know, we're all leaving as soon as you finish school. This is not our home. You get to self-determine where your home is, you should, you know, you should probably try to go to Cuba, go to Argentina, go to Spain, see where you feel at home, you know, and with, with beliefs, it was the same. So both my parents are baptized. Um, they weren't really practicing though. And they raised me as, you know, you figure it out kind of thing. I said one day, Hey, I want to go to church. They took me to church. Hey, I want to, I want to go to, um, a mosque and they were well, yeah, yeah, you know they took me like they kind of gave me the books they gave me the knowledge they showed me around i was really into hinduism as a kid um i've always believed in reincarnation because to me it was like this is so it makes obvious. sense yeah it makes sense like, and so i'm there in luxembourg being raised by a latin family <laughs> in a world full of like Mediterraneans, North Africans, and Latinos, and uh, whatever, and then I'm suddenly like, I'm really, you know, reading about Hinduism, and talking to my friends that, like, I was nine, talking to them about how reincarnation is obviously the thing, you know, <laughs> so I, I, I was raised, and I was able to become this puzzle, this, uh, this puzzle of all these different things, so 
in terms of my faith as well, like I'm, you know, you were saying how you feel very connected to Eastern philosophies and, and Eastern spiritualities. And actually, man, um, recently during lockdown, I got into Tai Chi because I had a, a neighbor in Cuba who practices it. So, you know, I asked him to teach me some stuff and he's really into the philosophical side of it rather than yeah. the physical. Like for him, it's all this one whole thing. And I learned so much from it about myself as well. Um, for me, it was a bit like when you first get into yoga and you think it's just you doing weird Busted, poses for yeah. and it's, you do it and you're like, oh, you know, wow, this is the whole thing. So for me, Tai Chi opened that door and it was very, I find it really helpful in my, in my productivity as well yeah. because it allows me to come back to my body and in a, in a way that nothing else really does, even more than yoga, you know? Well, I mean, I so suppose it's, it's all like centered I around... Up, I go outside, have my moment, you know, like I have a park just over there, I'm very lucky. And I go there, like be in the middle of the tree and, and do, my, do my 24 a couple of times and then I come back here and, you know, all my, all my spiritual Simple. doors are open, you know? Mm. Well, I mean, it's linked to the breath and breathing. A lot of it, yeah. like, you know, is, is all about... I mean, even if you're not spiritual and stuff, there's many things that you can do as a person just mm -hmm. to find that center. Like literally even just taking um, four breaths in slowly, holding it for two and breathing out mm -hmm. for four, you know what I mean? Counting in for, and doing that 10 times over and over. I promise you doing four rounds of that, you'll feel, you'll feel pretty relaxed and focused, you know? Yeah. And stretching is good as well. And also another thing that I find really helpful um so right now i'm doing very long days i'm doing you know 12 14 hour days i have all these deadlines i have to meet so i'm like i have to focus for a very long time every thank day. you for being here for me <laughs> hey no man of course no problem this is this is beautiful i'm i'm enjoying this so much but like so you know i'm i'm currently super busy and and the way for me to keep focused is stretch every you know half an hour or an hour get up have a stretch um go get some fresh air, which in my case translates as go outside and smoke a cigarette. Um, <laughs> fresh air, you know? But like, while I'm, while I'm out there, like, you know, I'm, I'm smoking, I shouldn't be, but like, I'm, I'm smoking. And this thing I, I do is, you know, you, uh, aside from, you know, when you can focus on your breath if you want to come back to your focus, but another thing is, two things that I do is, one of them is observe particular things that I see uh, and think about their quality. So for example, right now I'm looking, there's a plant over there. So I'm looking at the plant, I'm looking at the leaves that are, you know, bright green and they're shiny and I observe their texture. Then, you know, just stop and observe your surroundings carefully. Imagine what the texture of the leaves feel like, you know, think about what the temperature is, how the air feels on your skin, you know, and then you come back. And for me, something that's super helpful is, you know, those drawings they teach you as a kid in, when you learn the human anatomy, where they show you the one with like the blood, so there's the heart and all of the veins. Mm. It's about imagining, picturing that in your body. So think of like, try to feel the blood going through your veins. I know this feels like this sounds quite like physical, yeah. but actually it works. And try and feel your heart beating. Like not even going like this, but just try and go inside yourself, find your heartbeat and connect with the blood moving around your bodies. Connect with your arteries, you know, connect with all the different parts of your body and all the energy that's moving through them. And this is something that takes, you know, two minutes out of your day and it brings you to this whole other level of, you know, being at peace with yourself. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's consciousness and awareness because that, mm -hmm. that is the thing that, that these practices do for us is because most people walk around just you go, you fucking on your phone, you get on the train, you go to work, back on your mm -hmm. phone, you come home, you make your dinner, you're on your phone, you're watching TV, you watch TV, you fall asleep, you go, you know, you start the process again. So it's that about bringing your awareness to everything, to life, to nature, to the beauty is around. And then you won't be bored, like, oh, I'm bored, like fucking, you know, I <laughs> think that kind of shit. Yeah. So yeah, I, lo I love that, man. That's, that's a really um, awesome practice. I wanted to go into this new segment I have on the on my podcast called uh, "When I." So I'm gonna say uh, "When I," and then I'll say something, and then you complete the sentence. Okay. Yeah? <laughs> so just a few questions. I like this. Yeah. So when I wake up in the morning, I. 
I open my curtains, look out the window, and look at the trees. <laughs> okay, that's nice. <laughs> I just, you know, I wake up in the dust. The first thing I have to do, like, just look outside and look at my surroundings. Okay. And then I start my day. <laughs> uh, when I am stressed out, It depends what level of stressed out we're talking about here. <laughs> um, when I'm mildly stressed out, my brain unfolds and my focus multiplies so that I can get past whatever is stressing me. Mm. Otherwise, if I am insanely stressed out in a non-solvable way, I serve myself a large glass of rum and just let it go. <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. When I feel embarrassed. I over talk. Okay. Lots. Like I tend to fill in the silence and try and, you know, decorate the air with words so that no one <laughs> notices what I just did. Okay. Um, when I feel tired. Coffee? Or nap. Okay, nice. Yeah, simple one. And last one, uh, when I want something really badly. I get my scales, my metaphorical scales out and weigh out how badly do I want this? What price am I going to have to pay for it? And I'm not talking about money, I'm talking about here and here and money as well like in every yeah. in every oh, yeah. way the first thing i do is get those scales out like how badly do i want this what's this going to do for my happiness and my joy what is the price i have to pay for it and then depending which way it goes either let it go or just focus and just go for it beautiful beautiful and i mean it it it, it tells man i mean like uh, for people who don't who haven't seen that i mean i'm gonna put links to all your work and um, everything that you've done like in the description and stuff you'll see how amazingly talented and i wouldn't just i mean like for me you know you don't like the word urban for me when someone says oh you're so talented like i, I sometimes feel like it takes away from the amount of work and effort that actually is required that goes into making shit happen especially as a musician like people say see you playing the piano. Oh, she's so talented. I know she fucking spent like years and years practicing that shit yeah. to be that good, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, um, yeah. Actually, there's I wanted that, to- There's the fact that I actually spend half of my working day doing things that are not playing the piano. Answering yeah. emails, putting together stuff for social media, uh, answering phone calls, sorting out stuff for concerts and recordings and whatnot, um, etc. You know, Admin. you know how. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, actually, I forgot to ask you something. I mean, I was going to finish after that, but I wanted to just touch a bit on um, playing with Hans Zimmer in the Hans Zimmer. Um, what is it? The Hans World of Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer. Yeah, oh, I mean man. that's dope. I mean Hans Zimmer is a fucking legend. Kick! It's so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's great. I mean, it, this thing just kind of, you know, when you ask the universe and you're like, hey, dear universe, I, I really want to spend more time touring and traveling, even if it's not with my own music. And then, blam, the universe lands in my inbox and, you know, hello, we would like you to come and play piano for the world of Hans Zimmer. You've been warmly recommended by, you know, this and that person. Wow. First, I'm like, this is joke. Thank you, <laughs> you <know? Thank> you. <laughs> Yeah, and so, yeah, so, no, no, it turned out not to be a joke, and, you know, two months later, I was in Berlin in this enormous rehearsal hall the size of, like, an ice rink, um, rehearsing with some musicians that I enormously admire, who are now basically family, um, and we got a bunch of tours, and it's incredible, and every time, it's, ah, it's such a kick, I miss it so much, everything's been postponed until, you know, late 2021, so that's not going to be happening for a while. Oh, so you, but you're still involved with that, though, you're still going to be Yeah, involved. I am, I am, yeah, and it, it's been very interesting, because, you know, you have the orchestra, and then you have the soloists, we travel together with the soloists, and we're all so different, and we all have so much to learn from each other, so, for example, you have, you know, people that come from this, uh, 
jazz background such as Juan Garcia Herreros, uh, the bass player who's sick Latin jazz basses, mm. Pedro Eustache, who is basically 10 of the world's best musicians rolled into one brain. Um, he's incredible. He's a producer. He plays wind instruments. He plays percussion instruments. He's also, you know, enormously um, knowledgeable when it comes to jazz theory and also the, the philosophy of music and you know the, the transcendental aspect of music so you know we i talk to him and i feel like i'm learning so much and i think we all have something to bring to each other mm. um and i think that's what resonates on stage but you, you know? are you you just playing piano and um I play piano some play... accordion um accordion. i play piano for the whole the whole show um i've got my little setup there you know with my keys and my my production elements i use i run through a computer so um yeah and then for the last song it's Pirates of the caribbean i get to actually get my accordion out and go to the front of the stage and actually like have my little you know rock and roll. <laughs> um so yeah it's pretty good man <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah that's i think that's a good note to uh kind of wrap up yeah is there, is there any um I can't wait for that to come back man now you made me got me all fired up like i wanted to get back <laughs> ah, you know Oh man. But yeah, no, Eli, thank you so much, man. Is there anything that you want to leave us with or any words that you Yeah, like to... just a little update on releases and crowdfunders and concerts and all of this stuff. I was just so, gonna say, yeah. by the way, I'm not sure when this episode might come out. So if you have dates and stuff in mind, uh yeah. Okay, so there is a crowdfunder that is running at the moment until the first week of December for an online concert that we want to do with my salsa band. So until, um, you know, if we reach our goal, obviously the concert will just happen. So you'll, you'll be able to see this probably on the text below, I guess, or yeah. up here or yeah. somewhere. somewhere. Um, then in March, we have a Ronnie Scott's date, an actual date, supposedly, if everything goes back to normal. And aside from that, I'm releasing one uh, studio video from Havana with my Latin Jazz Project one music video which is, has come out incredible which is all dancers in in different places in ruins this is with an elida project which is my okay. more personal jazz yeah. thing uh, and then wara is has a new music video and single coming out as well all of this will be out between january and march so i can't drop everything at the same time i don't know yet in which order that will be but so new year on. new year blessings for everybody yeah 2021 is a year of releases baby so yeah, yeah well. <laughs> Later in the year, we have a whole album, a whole salsa album coming out. I think around April. So yeah, I'm sure. Time. I'm sure there's going to be lots of babies born in 2021, not just uh, physically, yeah. but also. Uh, <laughs> I mean, but also physically, I like, have my friends are pregnant. It's crazy. I'm pregnant with humans. I'm pregnant with music. Yeah. Like, yo, lost that. <laughs> Yeah. Yo, man, thank you so much again for. for no, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure and. Like, I look, I look forward to us being able to get together and cook up some tunes again soon, you know? Yeah, soon, soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Take well, care, thank man. Thank you. Please. People, yeah. other well, side of the sun podcast, like, subscribe, you know the deal. And Ellie, thank you so much. Don't stop. Yeah.